conversations? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I know you. First of all, how did the damage occur to the left front of your car? Small car waved me through on the uh, on the outside of a corner, and then changed his mind. And I just, and he closed the hole. I just locked up, and I just touched him. Actually, uh, well, obviously touched him, freezed me hard, but slow traffic pull across the front. I noticed what, when you stopped just now, they paid no attention to it, made no effort to rectify it. How how much damage has it done to the ability to drive the car? Well, I just did it. I was doing 222 dead or something. How much is about what I was qualifying at? So the car's uh, steering beautifully. Uh, in fact, that's what I tried to tell them on the way down. The, the radio broke down. I'm about to throw it as far as I can. Uh, I told him I came in, I said, there is no damage to the radiator, there's no damage to the steering. Pull the mudguard away, top it up with petrol, and I'm away. But you can see the confusion of bits, I almost ran you over. I, I, I gotta, don't worry about me, I've, I've never been run over yet. I get out of the way. What about your chances of, of catching up now? Oh, we're well in front then. We're well in, we're well in front then, a pretty quick stop. I think we'll be down. Once Jim gets out there now, uh, I reckon we'll be uh, we're out of the front right now. We caught up a fair bit then. A little bit of a development up the road, uh, Peter. Alan Moffat standing by for Bob Morris and making it in the car. Think that'll make the race more interesting? <laughs> I suppose so. To satisfy a few Ford fans top of the mountain. Great support to see Dick Johnson uh, <laughs> hit the back. Very, very close to where I had a coming together with a small car. And I will bet it was the same problem. A small car moving across the front of him, and honestly, you've got nowhere to go. Unfortunately, those sort of problems usually occur in the early part of the race. Uh, and after a few near misses, the small, guy, small car drivers usually sort of uh, are aware of the speed differential. They tend to watch the mirrors early on. Did you, did you know what happened to Dick Johnson? Well, he uh, hit the uh, wall, retaining oh, wall, no. on the exit of the... Uh, what happened, Peter? Somebody threw a rock out. Oh, I thought it might have been a small car. That's terrible. That's terrible. It really is. It's been a tragic thing, and not only did he crash the car, but he is an emotional wreck after it. Oh, this, oh it's a one-shot deal for them. They've lost well, everything. I did see a rock on the road. In fact, I hit it myself, as a matter of fact. I came up there, and the uh, flags were just being raised because, uh, well, it was too far behind, Nick. And uh, I saw a, I ran, in fact, I hit, ran over a bit of rock myself. That must have been the rock. Well, it's unbelievable that some spectators would do that. Well, it's a sad right, commentary on well, take a good rest, Peter. Good luck. All right. All right, a nice talk with Peter Brock as he goes back to get his rest. And back to you, Evan. Thank you very much, Mr. Economy. Well, you can see the confusion in the driver's uh, minds. They're not quite sure what's going on around them. Uh, and Peter had worked out his uh, version of what must have happened to his rival, Dick Johnson. And uh, the car's going much better than most of us thought. We, we thought he was in terrible trouble early on. But he's now back in the race and pulling away from uh, Alan Grice, who's now in second spot. And here we have the scene of these two beautifully presented Camaros running around nose to tail. Camaros running a fair way back in the field. Right behind them, we've got Jim Richards at the wheel of 05, and Jim's not uh, circulating anywhere near as quickly as Peter Brock was, but of course he's... Well, 